Hello, welcome to this short video. I talk a little bit about why scientists are interested in esports, specifically social scientists. What would social scientists be interested in esports? Why would they study this? My name is Ben Lin, and I'm a doctoral student at the University of Florida. And I've started a little bit of research on esports, so I'll give you just this little bit of a background as I go through this, and I'll focus just on one specific area of this where researchers are really interested. But understand, there's a lot of different areas that social scientists would be interested in esports, and I'll kind of talk about those as we go. But the first thing, I think a good starting point, is to define what is esports. What does that mean? Not everybody who's watching this probably knows what an esport is. Well, the simplest way to define an eSport is to say that it's competitive video gaming. Now, I'm not talking about competitive like, you know, you challenge one of your siblings like, hey, I'm going to beat you at this level or, you know, help me beat the boss or something. I'm talking about where these people train. That's part of it is they need to be training and then it's a competitive environment at an organized event. So now it becomes an eSport. So you're familiar with traditional sports where, you know, athletes train, they have practices, they have coaches, and then they go into these big venues and they compete against each other, whether it's individually or in teams. Well, that's how esports is as well. And they have coaches, they have managers, and then they go to these large venues all around the world and compete in these events against other teams. So that's kind of the backstory for what esports are, and that gives you an idea of understanding, okay, this is a pretty big thing. And like anything else in life, if we look at the money, uh, that tells the big story about what esports are. So esports is a $1 billion industry. That's a lot of money going through this. And also look at the number of viewers that they have. They have 433 million viewers worldwide. That's more than American football and rugby combined. So esports has taken off, especially over the last, I think it's the seven, eight years last seven, eight years has really blossomed. Although it was in the early 2000s that we had started to see esports start to hit broadcasting and things like that. It wasn't until the last five, six years that we really started to see this stuff take off. And now it's just uh, really proliferating at this point. So state of the art right now, esports, the big question for social scientists is will esports follow T-sports? Now T-sports stands for traditional sports. And if you've watched traditional sports at all, you should already be familiar with the fact that women's sports don't get nearly as much coverage as men's sports. This has been documented for over 25 years that they've been looking at, you know, how much coverage does women's sports get and how much coverage does men's sports get? And the big question is, will esports turn out to be the same way where it's a male dominated uh, landscape, so to speak? And right now, that's a big question because when we look at just generally what gamers, you know, who are gamers and stuff, well, 46% of gamers generally are women. But what that statistic right there doesn't go into is the fact that women tend to play on their smartphone, well, uh, men tend to play on their consoles and stuff, or higher percentages of them do. So there is a difference in how they play, but we see across the board that there's a large percentage of women that are playing, you know, games generally. But then if we look at the esports landscape, it's definitely not 46%. In fact, women comprise just a very small fraction of the elite esports athletes. And I say a very small fraction because it's just, it's such a small number. You might have like one female crack, you know, into this particular league at the top every few years. That's how few there are at the very top. It's completely dominated, dominated by men. So as a social scientist, we're starting to look at this and go, okay, well, what's the process? Why is it that there aren't women at the very top? And the reason that we're asking that is because, well, in theory, esports should provide an equal playing field for both men and women. Because if you think about it, they have the controller and you have your fingers, but it doesn't require a certain amount of physical strength uh, per se, you know, in order to do that. You do have to have certain hand-eye coordination and you have to know your strategy and things like that. So that's where we're looking at this going, well, if everybody has these uh, controllers and men and women are supposed to be on an equal playing field, why is it that there's virtually no women at the very top elite levels of esports? So that's where social scientists start to get involved and we start to ask these questions about that. So there is research though showing that there are some differences in uh, the cognitive processing between men and women 
And it does have to do with things like some spatial orientation. And uh, so you could say, well, that's why there's not women at the top at the elite levels is because there's uh, gender differences between how they process the information. But that doesn't necessarily tell the whole story because if you look into it, yes, the effects are robust. Like over multiple studies, they've shown that there are some of these differences, but there's still questions about why those differences are there to begin with. So we can't just say, hey, it's just this, it's only you know, because of gender differences, case closed. What we need to do is we need to go a step farther because when we look at this and we start to go, well, what are women experiencing on their path to get to the top? We find that women face a really toxic gaming environment that's likely to affect that path that they're taking. Now, what do I mean by like a toxic gaming environment? That means that women are gonna face things like sexual harassment. They're gonna uh, face gender bias all along the path that they, excuse me, look at this out correctly, the entire path all the way to the top. So what that means is that if you talk to a female gamer, and if you haven't yet, you really need to, ask them what it's like when they're you know, playing uh, any team oriented game and then they enter that team. And then you know some of the comments that come their way as they're starting to play or follow some of the uh, female streamers and see what people say in their chats and uh, some of the comments that go towards them. So females don't have an equal playing field when it comes to getting to the top. They're facing a lot more um, challenges along the way. And ultimately that can kind of probably lead to some of those females just saying, look, I've had enough. Understandably so, you can only take so much of that harassment before enough's enough. So this is what social scientists are looking into. And a big part of this is that we don't wanna just look at the top level or just you know that last step before they get to the top level. What they really wanna do is they wanna start looking at the developmental process. So kids we know game at an early age, both males and females, they're gaming you know, at this early age. So what's that process like as they develop? At what point? Do females start to, you know, get social pressure to not game? At what point do they start to encounter that sexual harassment? Because as social scientists, if we can correct those problems really early on, now it could lead to um, a clear path for those females to get to the top then. So that's where it's at right now. And looking ahead, the goal is that the best players are going to reach the top, male or female. Um, the ultimate goal is that the very best of the best no matter what their gender is, are gonna make it to the elite level because ultimately one of the motivations for watching eSports is that you wanna see the best players. If you, if you play a certain game, you wanna see the best players playing that game, right? So at this point, it's dominated by males, but if females had uh, equal access and equal opportunities without the harassment along the way, then we might see some females at the top and because they're, by the numbers of 46% of gamers generally are female, there's going to be some great gamers, uh, female gamers within that that should be making it to the top. So that's where things are, you know, moving towards. Now, additional research, I told you that I only touch on one aspect of this to kind of get your interest and go, hey, here's what's going on and, uh, you know, where we're at. But as we saw in uh, the summer of 2020 with social justice is a huge issue, not just in society generally, but in Esports as well, it's right there with minorities and then LGBTQ plus community. They're facing the same problems as the females are as well. So there's a whole track of research that could be done looking into those issues if that's something that you're interested in. It's sitting there waiting for you to go out there and conduct this research and kind of look into it and stuff and help solve these problems because minorities are facing these same problems as well. And remember what I said about the controller, right? It's like the controller doesn't care what color your skin is. It should be, in theory, equal for everybody. But that's not the case because people encounter biases and they encounter harassment along the path. So that's where social scientists come into play is to solve these problems. So how do you get involved? All of a sudden you're like, hey, this is kind of interesting and I'd like to see you know, uh, what I could do to help this or I'd like to learn more about it. Well, my advice to you is contact a sports communication researcher. Even if they don't study esports, Chances are, if they're doing, you know, sports communication, they know traditional sports and they've already got the framework in place to help you get involved with this esports and start to learn about esports and do a study on esports. 
So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or uh, anybody, you know, your uh, instructor who's uh, showing this video to you. Ask them about that. I'm sure that they can come up with some references for you so you can learn more about what the scenarios are and the situations and uh, learn more about esports generally. So anyway, hope this helped and hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks a lot for watching.